Good morning from Panama. Today is a little bit of a different video. Uh, this is my right-hand man, Popsy, who should be called Saint Popsy because without him, I would not have been able to do 98% of the things that I've gotten accomplished in the last few weeks. He's been wonderful and he's my property caretaker. So when I have someone who's going to be a regular employee, there are certain laws that you have to follow here in Panama. So today we're going to start that process of getting legal here in Panama and it's a little bit different than doing business in the United States. We're going to have to make a very interesting trip today. So stay tuned and see where our adventures lead us. Okay, I'm cheating. I took my mask off for a second. But uh, so this is how doing business in Bocas is a little bit different than other places. In order for us to fill out all of the employee paperwork, we're going to Bocas Town, which is on Isla Cologne in the Bocas Archipelago. And right now we drove, we drove about 20 minutes to the town of Almirante. We're here all the time to get supplies and stuff for building. But today we are here to catch the water taxi. So this is the little boat that we're gonna be going to focus in at 9.15 and it's about a 30 minute trip over. Okay, so we're in the boat and we're heading to Bocas take us about 30 minutes and I did want to say that a uh, round trip ticket for a resident which yay I am now eight dollars so for basically an hour on the boat 30 minutes there and 30 minutes back straight behind you there is Solarte and the one kind of in the middle that's Bastimentos. Time to get some business done. So we have arrived at the offices of Virginia Vasquez and she was highly recommended as the person to handle all of these types of transactions and you can see that she's right in between the police station and uh, Bocas Brothers restaurant. So we're going to go in, meet her, and see what kind of paperwork we have to do to get legal. Okay, so we finished our meeting at uh, Virginia's house. Lovely, lovely woman. Her name is Virginia Vasquez, and I'm going to put her contact information down in the discussion notes. If you live in Bocas and you have payroll issues, building contract issues, need to find an architect, um, all of that sort of stuff, she handles it. So, I'm, like I said, I'm going to put everything in the discussion so you can get a hold of her. Let me tell you a little bit about what happened in the meeting. So, Pepsi and I went in, and she already had the contract basically drawn up because I had already sent her everything via email and then uh, I, I'm going to link you to a copy of the contract so you can kind of see how it's written up but basically we just had to say um, like how many days a week he's going to work um, how much he's going to get paid for that what days he's going to get paid for that or uh, what days he's going to work and what hours he's going to work so all of that had to go into the employment contract along with that i had to send over a copy of my passport and pepsi had to send a copy of his cedula uh, so our ids were on file and i also had to send a uh, a survey of my property which i thought was really interesting Fortunately, I did a survey, otherwise I wouldn't have had one. So maybe think about that. If you're going to have uh, regular employees and you plan to do that legally, which I highly recommend, then you're going to want a survey of your property because that's kind of part of the package that's going to go to Social Security. So after we fin uh, finished all of the contracts, there were a bunch of other papers I had to fill out. One was kind of like a power of attorney um, so uh, uh, Virginia could uh, go to the Social Security office and make the payments in my name. So she's going to do that every month for me. Basically, I'm going to get an email from her company that says uh, what is the, uh, 
the gross uh, salary that I paid for that month, I'm going to send them that information back, and then they're going to send that to Social Security, get all of the calculations back, tell me what I have to pay, I pay them, and they go to the government office and handle all of that for me. So what did all of this cost me? To get the contracts drawn up and all of that, $100, and then it's going to be $35 a month for them to handle everything for me. Absolute dream. Because when you're in Panama, if you're dealing with the government, you want to make sure that you have people that A, speak fluent Spanish, and B, know what they're doing. So everything's going to be done right, and you can trust that you're not going to get in trouble. So speaking of trouble, when I had sent her all of the information, I had uh, just put that day's date on the, the contract uh, that I wanted her to start it, and that was like January 4th. Well, she said, you know what? We have to file this paperwork within five days uh, because otherwise you get fined. So keep that in mind. When you're planning on doing your contracts, you only have a five-day window between the time that you create your contract until all of that is filed with Social Security. Uh, today is a Friday, and she said we should be all set and have everything done by Wednesday. Five business days, right? So what is this uh, basically payroll tax stuff going to cost me? Well, it's 27%. It's split in a few different types of fees. And just like in the United States, when you have an employee, uh, the employee generally pays a portion of those taxes and withholding and Social Security and all of that stuff, and then the employer pays a portion as well. Um, well, in the case of Papsi, he's completely invaluable to me. So I'm going to pay all of that for him. So he's not going to have anything taken out of his check. And so I recommend you, if you have an indispensable employee that you don't want to lose, and you want to make them happy, and you're paying them a, a fair wage, and you can afford it, I would really recommend you just pay all of that for them. You're going to have a loyal, happy employee, and that's absolutely what you want, and not only want, but need when you're in Panama. Like I said earlier, I couldn't have gotten 98% of the stuff done that I have had it not been for St. Pepsi. Okay, so the whole process took about maybe 45 minutes. It didn't take long at all. Um, fill out those papers, sign everything. They're going to take it all to the Social Security office, get everything stamped for me, and then send me the copies. So when I get those copies back, I'll link to those down in the description as well, just so you can kind of see what you're getting into. So the bottom line is that I recommend that you do everything legally here all of the time. So if you have a regular worker, you need to file the proper information with government. Because if someone reports you, and believe me, there are stories of that happening, and way more than one, if someone reports you that you are not doing things right, it's going to cost you a whole lot more in the long run. You don't want government fines and getting sued by an employee and all of that sort of thing. So do things right. Now, what happens when you have workers that aren't regular? Because I have four of those on my property right now that are clearing uh, the land. They're not going to be working for me five days a week every single week of the year, right? They're only there when we need some property cleaning. So I talked to, uh, to uh, Victoria about that. I keep wanting to call her Virginia. I don't know why. But I talked to Victoria about that, and she said that when you have a worker that's coming on your property, you have to make a very specific contract that states when they're going to start working, when that work is going to end, and what the total amount of that work is going to cost you. Because at that point, basically, they are an independent contractor. They're their own business, and you're paying them. They're not an employee. So you have to have all of that information in there. And if you're paying them in increments, then all of that needs to be listed in the contract as well. So it's very important that if you even have somebody just coming to clear land for a couple of days, that you have them sign a simple contract. It doesn't even have to be drawn up by an attorney or pay someone to do it. I'm going to draw mine up exactly how she told me to. And again, I'll put a link to it in the description. So then you can see what you need to do for workers who aren't regular workers. So you're always staying on the right side of the law. If someone does sue you and it happens more than you think, you're going to have the paperwork to back up your position in court and it's not going to cost you. All right. So, Pepsi and I just had an amazing lunch at one of my favorite burger joints uh, here in Boca. It's called Brothers. They have great hamburgers. Both Pepsi and I had the Isla Cologne burger, which is the one with pineapple on it. We're both big pineapple fans. And now it's time to catch a boat 
back to Almirante and head back home. So it's been a, a, an easy day of dealing with something that could be extremely complicated if I was doing it on my own. And I hope that this information helps you understand how to better work with your employees and your contract workers that come onto your property to save you the headache and hassle of lawsuits and government fines. Stay on the right side of the law and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe because we have some great ones coming up.